The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Um, Mr. Nyanzo Babi, you are quantity and estimate teacher. Today, we are going to start our lesson with the correction of homework. Last week, you were asked to convert from degree to rating. In the first point, to convert 240 degree to rating. For us to do that, we simply multiply 240 by pi on 180. When you multiply this, the answer you have after analyzing, because you have to simplify also before you have the final answer. The final answer that you have is 4 pi on 3. In the second point, you were asked to convert 135 degree to radian. To do this, you simply multiply 135 by pi on 180. When you simplify this, the answer that you have is, uh, is 3 pi on 4. And thirdly, you were asked to convert minus 270 degree to radian. For us to do this, we simply multiply minus 270 by pi on 180. 180. When we simplify this, we have the result minus 3 pi on 2. Therefore, 200 from the beginning, 240 degree is equal to 4 pi on 3. 135 degree is equal to 3 pi on 4. And minus 270 degree is equal to minus 3 pi on 2. Today, we are going to continue with definition of trigonometric line. <laughs> so, as trigonometric line is concerned, we are going to start with our lesson plan. In our lesson plan, we are going to have first the objective. Secondly, previous knowledge. Thirdly, professional situation. And also, more to that, teaching activities, recall, application exercise, and homework. Now, to attend this, 
We're supposed to know at the end of this lesson that we are going to be able to identify the different sides of a triangle. That is what we call the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. The four region of a plan in Cartesian coordinate system. When we talk of Cartesian coordinate system, we talk of the vertical axis, which is the y axis, and the x axis, which is the horizontal axis. And we know that at the intersection of these two axes, we always name it zero, because at that point we are at zero. And when we leave from that point zero, going towards our right, we, in that side, that, in that, <clears throat> leaving from zero towards our right, that is positive x axis. From that point zero, going towards our left, that one, we call it negative x axis. Also, we have the vertical axis. From point zero, going up, we have the vertical y axis. And point zero going down, we have the negative y axis. More to that, we supposed also to be able to know the difference between sine, cosine, and tangent. Because those are main trigonometric ratios that we use in quantity and estimate. Firstly, Following our last, last lesson, I know already that you have the notion on the techniques of freehand drawing or sketching. So, when we know already, when at this moment, I beg your pardon, you know already how to draw using your free hand, and also we, you can use also instrument. That is, when we talk about instrument, we talk about instrument that we use in drawing. Secondly, you have already notion on the different units that we use in trigonometry angles, or the different unit that we use in to, uh, to, to in angles. Thirdly, the notion on the use of calculator that you can use a calculator to calculate angles. <clears throat> For the professional situation, you are a student on internship in Brothers and Son Building and Construction Company, where a good number of trainees do not don't know how to define the trigonometric line and the sign of sine, cosine, and tangent in the four quadrant. The site manager entrusted you for the production of document to train others. Firstly, you have to do something through sketches so as to show them how to proceed. For us to attain this objective, this is the four quadrant as that we are talking about. This is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. As I was saying, this is the vertical x-axis, a uh, y-axis. Here is the vertical y-axis. When you leave from here, going up, you are going towards positive y-axis. And when you leave from zero here, going down, you are going to negative 
y-axis. And also, when I leave from zero, going towards lower right, they are going towards positive x-axis. And when I leave zero, going towards lower left, you are going towards negative x-axis. Now, as we are seeing here, all positive. It implies in this quadrant, all the trigonometric ratio that we use in quantity and estimate are positive. That is, sine is positive, cosine is positive, and tangent is positive. In this second quadrant, you see here they say that sine is greater than zero and others negative. It implies in this quadrant only sine is positive, cosine is negative, tangent is negative. So it is only sine which is positive in this second quadrant. Now, in the, in the third quadrant, we see tan of theta, angle theta is greater than zero. That implies, if you see here, others negative, it implies the other trigonometric ratio, like cosine and uh, sine are negative here. Let's move now to the fourth quadrant. In this quadrant, you see here, cos theta is greater than zero. Therefore, only cosine is positive here. Others trigonometric ratio, sine and tangent are negative in this quadrant. Let's consider the right angle triangle, OPQ. In this figure that we are seeing in front of us, we see here zero. Therefore, this is the point zero that we are in the trigonometric line. As from zero towards our right, we have positive x. Then, from zero upward, we are going towards positive y axis here. That's why you see positive y here. And at this point now, R, which is the, represent the diagonal, we usually call name it hypotenuse. Here, we call this side, this, the side represented by X, the adjacent, and this one is the opposite. Now, the sign of angle theta is equal to y on x. The sign is equal to y on x, which is equal y on r, I mean a big pardon, y on r, which implies the opposite, which is the y vertical y axis divided by the hypotenuse, which is the diagonal. Now, the cosine of angle theta is equal to x on r, that is the adjacent on the hypotenuse. We know that in this quadrant, we are in the, we are going towards the positive x axis, that's why we see x on r. Now we go down to the tangent. The tangent of that angle theta is equal to y on x, that is the opposite of the angle on the adjacent of that angle. Now, for our learning activities, we are going to start with the introduction. A quadrant is one of the four regions into which a plan is divided in the Cartesian coordinate. Therefore, when we divide it vertically and horizontally, we have one, two, three, and four quadrants. Those are the four quadrants that we have in trigonometric lines. 
Now, the definition of what we call trigonometric line. Trigonometric line are straight line in a straight a straight line whose length represent the value represent the value of the function, particularly those of the sine, cosine, and tangent. The three trigonometric ratio that we're going to use. Consider the right angle triangle, OPQ, that we have below. We know already that the sign of the trigonometric ratio, sine of theta y is equal to sine of theta is equal to y on r. What we mean here implies y as an alien say represents the vertical axis which is positive and r the horizontal the, the r the hypotenuse. The cosine is x on r, and the tangent we have y on x, that is opposite on adjacent. Now we have now we know that if we consider this triangle, we have a point P and in as coordinate we have the X coordinate of that angle and Y coordinate of the angle. The coordinate of the point P, which is X and Y, changes as P moves from one quadrant to another. If we know in which quadrant the point P lies either in the first, second, third or fourth quadrant, then we can determine the size of we can determine the size of the sine, cosine, tangent with respect to an acute angle theta, that is the angle which x which the point P form with the x axis. Take for instance the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, you can see the point P. This is the point P having as coordinate x and y. Here, this is the angle theta that P form with x axis with the x axis and now we have here the trigonometric lines as you can see it is a vertical y axis which we also call the cartesian axis is also the x axis here now to have the sign of this angle it is opposite which is y on r which is the hypotenuse to have the cosine of this angle, we have adjacent, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is r. So, in the first quadrant, as I earlier said also, sine theta is equal to y on r, cos theta is equal to x on r, tan theta is equal to y on x. We are now in the second quadrant. We see when we move from zero towards our left, we have the negative x axis. That's why we have minus x here. When we move from zero vertically towards the <coughs> vertically towards y, we have the positive value of y which is 
when you read from zero upwards. That's why we see y here positive. Now, I will represent here what the side of triangles we call hypotenuse. To have the sine of this angle, we take that is sine of this angle theta. The sine of this angle is equal to y, which is the opposite, divided by r, which is the hypotenuse. You see that positive y divided by positive r is equal to positive. That is why we say that sine is positive in the second quadrant. Now, <coughs> to look for the cosine of this angle, it is adjacent on hypotenuse. That is minus x on r, which implies negative on positive. Why have negative on positive? Optionally, the final answer will be negative. That's why we say that the cosine is negative in the second quadrant. Now, tangent. Let's look for tangent of this angle, theta. The tangent is equal to opposite on adjacent. That is y on minus x, positive on minus, which is equal to neg negative which implies we have tangent in this quadrant negative. So, we see that sine of theta in the second quadrant is more than zero. Cos of theta in the second quadrant is less than zero. And tangent of angle theta in the second quadrant is negative we see that sine and tangent is negative in the second in the second quadrant and only sine is positive since positive y on r is, is positive so in the second quadrant in the second quadrant we see that In the third quadrant, because we were in the second quadrant, let's move to the third quadrant now. We have the point P now, lies now in the third quadrant. P half as coordinate minus x and minus y. Therefore, when we leave from zero, we move towards our left, we have minus x. And when we leave from zero, going down. To my, here we have minus y. Now let's look for the different trigonometric ratio in this quadrant. Theta, sine of angle theta here is equal to opposite, which is minus y, on r, which represents the hypotenuse. So minus on positive is equal to minus. Then, the cosine of angle theta is adjacent, which is minus x on hypotenuse, which is r. So we have minus on positive, which is equal to minus. So the cosine is negative also in the third quadrant. Now, let's continue. To look for the tangent of angle theta in the third quadrant, we see here, it is opposite, which is minus y on minus x. That is, minus on minus is equal to positive. Therefore, we can see that in the third quadrant, sine of angle theta is less than zero, cosine of angle theta is less than zero, and tangent of angle theta is positive. Therefore, in the third quadrant, only tangent is positive, others are negative. <coughs> Let's move to the fourth quadrant, which is the last quadrant. Now, we calculate the trigonometric ratio in this fourth quadrant. The sine of this angle, theta, is equal to opposite on 
our hypotenuse. That is minus y on the hypotenuse, which is positive y. So minus on positive is equal to negative. Therefore, our sign is negative in the fourth quadrant. Now, let's look for tangent of this angle, theta. You see, we have positive x here on the hypotenuse, which is r. So we have positive x on positive r. Therefore, positive on positive is equal to positive. So, uh, cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive. Let's look for a tangent of this angle, theta, which is equal to opposite on adjacent. So, we have here minus y on x, minus on positive, which implies negative. So, only tangent is positive in the fourth quadrant. Uh, is uh, only cosine is positive in the uh, fourth quadrant. So here we can see that sine of sine of theta is less than zero, cos of theta is more than zero, and tangent of theta is less than zero. Now let's take this. Uh, for demonstration, the sine of 30 degree is equal to sine of minus 30. The cos of 30 degree is equal to the cosine of 60 degree. Then, let's put it in the table globally to see what we are doing. We see that in the first quadrant, the sine of all sine is positive. Cosine is positive and tangent also is positive. Therefore, in the first quadrant, all is positive. All the trigonometric ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, cosine is negative, tangent is negative. Therefore, in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. The others are negative. In the third quadrant now, we have Sine is negative, cosine is negative, tangent is positive. Therefore, in the third quadrant, only tangent is positive, others are negative. In the fourth quadrant now, the sine is negative, cosine is positive, tangent is negative. Therefore, in the fourth quadrant, only only in the fourth quadrant, only sine uh, cosine is positive, as you can see. Now, look at this figure for a cause. We know that sine theta is equal to y on x, positive. Cos theta is equal to x on y, that is uh, adjacent on hypotenuse. Tangent is equal to y on x, which is equal to opposite over adjacent. For application exercise, let's take for instance, 390 degree is equal to 360 plus 30 degree. Therefore, if we simplify sine 390 cos 390, you got, we are going to simplify sine 390 cos 390 and tan of 390. And more to that, if sine of an angle is less than zero, cos of that angle is less than zero. Name the quadrant in which the point P corresponds to that to theta and where it lies. Then, for the solution of our exercise, we know that sine 390 is equal to sine 30, cos 390 is equal to cos 30, tan 390 is equal to tan 30, and following what we have thought in, we know that the angle theta lies in the third quadrant. For your homework, write down the associate acute angle as beta is 100 degree. 
and also 4 pi on 6. Within the range 0, and zero, zero to 360 degree, sine theta equal to 0 0.5, cos theta equal to 0 0.86, tan theta equal to 2.5. For reference, press book is the document that I have used for, for preparation of this lesson. Next lesson shall be on definition of sine, cosine, sine, tan, uh, tangent, and cotangent. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinkido, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 